and now. He checked the mics before the show. August was eating free food. Dawson was smoking. And Lynch was at a fish concert. Adam Carolla. Yeah, a little redundancy there. Dawson was definitely smoking. Dawson was smoking. No, he's getting ready for his booze cruise. On his booze cruise. Mary Morgan is our first guest. She's a writer. She's a digital creator. You can find her on uh, Tim Cast Media. Does a YouTube show, Pop Culture Crisis. She's a young 23-year-old woman. Oh, wow. 23 is still young these days? Yeah. The red pill has me confused. I don't know <laughs> what I would be doing at uh, 23. I didn't really have options, you know. What were you doing at 23 then? I was on a construction site just okay. doing... Uh, really the oldest work i mean they always go uh kind of based. the oldest profession prostitution but someone had to build the whorehouses <laughs> if you think about it you, you know what i mean i was just getting my hair done yesterday and the stylist told me he knows of a house that's down the street where all of these women are that is basically a brothel without saying out loud that it's a brothel and yeah. some guy owns it and i'm like okay so he's just larping as hugh hefner right yeah the like, oldest. there are things like that around here. This is the first time I've been in L.A., and it's really weirding me out. Yeah. This is a strange place, a rotten soon. place, a degenerate place. I I agree. It is <laughs> it is it is all of that, and, and then some. And, uh, yeah, when I was your age, everything was not so, you know, the only difference between my life as a carpenter when I was 23 and Jesus Christ is I had power tools. Other than that, it was life was the same, uh, essentially. And now you're 23, and it's a completely different landscape. In a bad way, you mean, or, or a good way? Well, I would say that every bit of technology comes with a good and a bad side of the, the sword, you know? And then there's a kind of unintended consequences side, you know? I mean, everything that the internet makes more convenient, I think it makes shittier, these days Explain dating that. oh right for instance yeah traveling yeah anything going to a concert like it's all meant to make life more convenient and streamlined but it also makes the quality of everything we enjoy shittier well yeah like you go to a concert and everyone's just standing there holding their phones up filming everything right so that too but i mean you need a smartphone to do pretty much anything in society now and i think that's a bogus presumption that we should have to have these things. That's interesting they have that take because um, you're so young that you don't, how much of life do you remember before the internet? None of it. Yeah. I mean, like I was born in 2000 and my parents were okay at, you know, making sure I had limited access to the internet. Like that was back when people's homes had a computer room. The you know dialogue. what I mean? Oh, that right. doesn't exist anymore. But we had one. Get off the phone, Mom. And then, like, I guess my first smartphone like device was an iPod Touch when I was 11. And since then, I've had a screen on me at all times. And I feel like I was kind of cheated out of the option to not do that. Yeah, I. Well, it's funny. It's, so it doesn't matter how young you are, you'll have some version of we didn't have you know, back in the day, but ours <laughs> didn't have was really didn't have. But I think it, it was a healthier life. I, yeah. I think it was, for instance, um, going, so the healthiest life you could probably have is you go out, you hunt, you kill something and you get your own food. Then the second healthiest maybe is you go to a market, you pay them, you buy a bunch of ingredients, and you go home and sure. cook it. And then the third is like, well, we'll go out to eat somewhere and pay them, and they'll make us a food. And then the fourth is we'll go on some app, and they will drop Taco Bell off at our house. Without and speaking to us, without of course. Without speaking to us. And, that's and they better not even look at us. Kind of where we're at now. So convenience is a real slippery slope because it seems yeah. like what we all want, but it leads to obesity and depression. <laughs> well, like DoorDash is one thing, but I've just been thinking more and more about how the, the apps have changed dating forever yeah. in the worst possible way because people are just commodities now. Right. And that We have completely commodified romance, sex, intimacy, completely... And, and it used to be shameful 
to do online dating, right? But now it's the majority of spouses are meeting each other this way. Yes. It used to be weird and embarrassing. If you yeah. met, you'd be ashamed to admit that you like met your spouse online. Oh, definitely. If you met somebody in the want ads, is what they would call <laughs> it, the want ads. I mean, there was a whole song. Gonna put in the one ads. Remember that one? Oh, come on, one. you're gonna I, know you're, it. I probably know it. You know, Mary, you get a you get a extended pass because you're so young. But Chris, a musician, <laughs> uh, put a uh, fine put it in the one ads. I don't know. I was thinking about this, but oh. Uh, uh, what, mail order 1972 brides? or something. <laughs> no, well, it was interesting. It was called the want ads. Like you wanted something. And it was considered a little bit shameful for a woman to want a relationship and actually physically put it in a, in a newspaper. This song is about a woman who's done with her guy and she's going to put it in the one ads and she's going to tell everybody and that her and her guy are, are through and she wants to find a, a new one. So let's see. I can't see it on my screen. Honey Cone? What's it called? The Honey Cone? That's yeah. weird. Oh, no. There's, a, there's just a song. The Honey Cone, maybe? Oh, ha- Honey Cone. Sorry. Oh, sorry. That. The Honey Cone. There's one word on this one. I don't know. We got to hear, hear the song. But it was a hit. Chris is going to know it, I okay. think. Anyway. There, no, I have a it. boyfriend. Um, How'd I you mean, meet him? Uh, in person. I don't mm-hmm. want to elaborate any further because he's a private person. Oh. But uh, we met in person, not through the internet. Um, I considered online dating, but never used anything other than Catholic Match because I'm Catholic. And that's a weird app because the Catholic dating world is just the secular dating world, but turned upside down, mm-hmm. where there are... On normal dating apps, the men outnumber the women by a lot, and they're doing a huge push to market these dating apps to women right now because it's, it's, it doesn't appeal to them anymore. Um, but on a website like Catholic Match, the women outnumber the men, I think, by quite a lot. At well, least that, that's how it seemed to me. Now you've announced this, though. That might change with our listeners. How, how are they verifying if you're Catholic? I mean, self-reported. Okay. <laughs> you would hope that if someone is on there and they're paying to be on there, that they're serious about it. So what do you think the state of young women are like in this country? <laughs> Big question. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not great. Um, I've been thinking about the state of Gen Z women in particular. And the fact that Gen Z is a generation that gets trashed so often in headlines And it's just really trendy to make fun of them and mock them. But also it's trendy to make statements uh, like Gen Z is the most conservative generation in decades. A lot of these statements that are like so bold and and have so much bravado, they aren't actually totally true. Gen Z is the most polarized generation, politically and socially. What are the ages from when to when is Gen Z? I think it starts when they're born in 1997 or mm-hmm. 1996, depending on who you ask, and it's through 2012. Oh, okay. So we're talking about kids who were born after the iPad. Yeah. Some of them raised with iPads, but the Alpha, Gen Alpha, I think we have more to worry about when it comes to Gen Alpha than Gen Z. Even though Gen Z has a lot of issues, Gen Alpha just never had a chance. It's just doomed. <laughs> These kids are, like, raised with a screen as their primary caregiver. It's extremely worrying. It's up to their millennial parents. So here's here's my take, which is, and I've always had a pushback against any group. I, I, you know, it it goes back to, it used to be your um, astrological sign, you know, that go, oh, you're Gemini, so you, you know, yeah. whatever. And uh, I used to say to people all the time, they go, you're Gemini, you're twins, you got two personalities. And I'd go, I got half a personality. I'm not even at a whole personality. <laughs> but this thing, so I don't like, as a member of the black community or the Muslim community or the Gen Z community or the feminine community or the gay and lesbian community, I don't think it's helping. Everything I, is a community now, by the way. Everything's a community, and I don't <laughs> think it works. It, it's not helping. I don't. I don't like it with the Armenian community. I don't like it with any community. Everyone is I, so aggrieved, right? Well, you know, it's funny. You see, 
once in a while you see like a montage of Joe Biden and he'll be up, depending on where he is, you know, he'll go, I grew up in the Greek Orthodox Church and I grew up with the synagogues. And then he'll go, I grew up with the Italian and I grew up with the Irish. You know, it's like he grew up with every community, depending (laughs) on who he's in front of. But also, I don't know what's so appealing about it, like as a dude, like if there's a dude going, I'm heterosexual, I'm over six foot tall, I'm white, and I'm half Italian. I go, get the fuck out of here, douchebag. What am I listening to you for? Why am I in your community? Yeah. The, I, why I don't are you qualifying it with it. Why? Why do I need to feel some sort of kinship? You with don't hear you? white guys saying that, though. We no, know it's not never, white guys who are saying that. that. No, it's everyone would... else who is insisting that they're part of an aggrieved community. Let me tell you, I've said it one million times, the real white privilege is not being in a group. That's the white privilege. We don't have... I think we could do with a little bit more of thinking about ourselves as a group. Would you want Al Sharpton? We're the only ones who are allowed to get trashed. But you want Al Sharpton speaking for you if you're in the black community (laughs) or Kamala Harris or whoever's black or claiming to be black like this week. Like I would not want anybody speaking for me that's it's the antithesis of america your your whole deal is you go out and do whatever you want or it's supposed to be that way all the group mm. talk and group think is super destructive it never helps the group per se and i think it's a feature and not a bug of humanity that we think tribalistically actually yeah i don't really know if that's a problem i don't really dislike it i used to think i did but it doesn't bother me anymore because i know that this is just the way that people's psychology works well, especially I, women. I will tell you the the problem with the tribalistic thing, and as as I've decreed a few times, I don't think there's anything wrong with us going. I'm a Pittsburgh Steelers fan. You're a Pittsburgh Steelers fan. Let's go to this Pittsburgh Steelers bar on Sunday. And we'll watch a game and we'll root for our team, which is fine. You root for your team, but that only goes on for so long. At some point, you have to find people who are Baltimore Ravens fans, and you have to hate them because they're the team trying to beat your team. And so it never just stays, uh, we love the Steelers. It goes, we love the Steelers, we hate the Ravens. And then at some point, you'll see a guy in a Ravens jersey, and you have to punch him because he is the other side. So the problem with the team is how long can you talk about being oppressed if you're a group, women, black, whatever, Hispanic, Muslim, whatever, how long can you be a group before you start looking around and going, who's doing the oppressing? And and then we should go after them. That's the danger of the group for me. Yeah, I mean, I think there is obviously a lot to be observed as like negative effects of groupthink, yes. Yes. But the more I think about, especially the way women operate collectively, And the way that we think as a collective and come to our conclusions through a sense of safety and consensus rather than just pure rationalistic, syllogistic logic, the more I just don't really hold it against us anymore that we think this way. And I think that we should just adopt uh, or sorry, adapt to um, speaking to people through that lens of the feminine lens as a group. I don't think that facts don't care about your feelings works anymore Mm -hmm. because feelings don't care about your facts and that matters just as much. Well, feelings will trump facts. Every time. Well, Feelings are more powerful than facts. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, certainly on a micro level, like at home, and then it's starting to spread into a macro like, like society at large. But yes, anybody who has a son and a daughter, as I do, and the daughter's spinning out about something, at some point... You've seen this for yourself. Well, it's a a natural um, inclination or reaction. I, I mean, okay, let's put it to you this way. There's always somebody in the workplace who's a pain in the ass. There's usually one. To me, in my workplace. Okay, in your workplace, it's you. Mm -hmm. And so 
what people do is they go, oh, someone's got to come in Saturday and do something with something. And then they'll go, do not ask so-and-so because it's going to be a thing and I don't want to deal with it. And so you end up just going around that person to, to somebody else. It's a kind of path of least resistance. Um, I can tell you, like personally, I got twins, boy, girl. Um, what ends up happening is we're going somewhere and the girl, this is years ago, would, would yell shotgun. She got to sit in the front seat. And then we go somewhere and she sat in the front seat. And we went, hung out for a few hours and it was time to go home. And then the son would go, now I get the front seat. And she'd throw up fit. Mm-hmm. She'd go, I get the front seat now. And then there'd be an argument, a fit. And then at some point you go, just take the front seat. Boy, get in the back. <laughs> it's not fair, but you just not, you don't want to deal with the surus. And the, mm-hmm. uh, the argument of it and, and the friction yeah. of it. And so feelings do trump facts in that particular case. Because the facts are you got the front seat on the way out, then he gets the front seat on the way back. Those yeah. are the facts. But the feelings will trump that because you don't want to deal with it. And that'll But take- on the macro level right now in society, that's kind of what we're doing. Yes. Is we're letting female feelings... Do our governance. Yes. Basically. It's problematic, as many would say. Yeah. Just not in the normal way that you hear the word problematic. Well, what is your, what is your, I have takes on this. Surprise, surprise. But uh, you, what, how do you see it manifest itself in terms of the government? Well, I have been outspoken about my beliefs on women's suffrage. Mm. And I was warned that this would come up, actually. Mm -hmm. And... Yeah, I mean, not that I think it's realistic for us to say that the 19th Amendment will be repealed. It's obviously never going to happen. But I think we should be capable of having an honest conversation about the ways that this has affected our country. If women's women suffrage were repealed, this would be a red country, mm-hmm. basically. And I don't even know if you think that would be a good thing because you're not, you know, super like, I'm a Republican. But... That's what I mean is, you know, for from my perspective and my worldview as a conservative, every outcome has gotten worse since we got women's enfranchisement in this country. Well, women vote more with feelings and then feelings aren't great for policy. No, I it's think not. is what a lot of it is. And they, I they're getting their empathy, which is natural to them, weaponized by sinister movements. Yeah, well let's uh let's take a subject. Let's take sanctuary cities. So a more feminine perspective would be we should be a sanctuary city. Nobody's illegal. All should be welcome here. Everyone should have the right to come here and thrive and and take, you know, eat from the horn of plenty and whatever. And you go, all right. So um, and just to be clear, like I've I just said this to Dr. Drew the other day and he was like, oh, write that down. Um, I'm now starting to break places up between uh, pink and blue. Um, and blue doesn't mean Democrat, it means dude. Mm-hmm. So Los Angeles is blue, but it's pink. It's sort of oriented from a feminine standpoint. California is pink. It's it's blue mm-hmm. when you talk about demographics and voting, but it's really pink. And then Florida is red, but it's really blue. It's right. Florida is men. Texas is male oriented. It's dude zone. It's 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 a difference in a, a way to approach things. And you can just kind of go down the line from city to city and go, what cities are sanctuary cities? And you go, okay, those are the pink cities. Those are the cities where people made proclamations about everyone coming to the city and no one's being legal. And then when everyone starts getting dropped off in buses, yeah. they go, What the hell's going on? We didn't ask <laughs> for this and we can't house all these people. So yeah, it, it, it's beyond immigration. It's crime, too. I mean, oh, yeah. these videos, I see new videos every day on my timeline of uh, these poor millennial lib women getting harassed by uh, neurodivergent unhoused people on the subway. And, you know, if you make one unempathetic glance at these people, you're going to get wailed on. And no one is going to help you because they don't want to end up like Daniel Penny 
right? right. Uh, <laughs> the guy choked uh, the guy. And there's there are no women who are really willing to speak out against that for their own sake. Right. And there are no men who are willing to step up and, and defend the women because they're never rewarded socially for doing so. Yeah, I think women ask for things <laughs> that they don't really want. I mean, this is a total gynocracy where women are basically shit testing men 24-7 and the men aren't passing the shit tests. Gynocracy, I like that. That I like women's suffrage as a movement in itself, I believe, was like a massive shit test that men failed. How did men fail? Because by the social pressure they were facing, they allowed women to have the right to vote. So, I mean, I see it more as a privilege, but it's only because men allow us to have rights that we have them because men have a monopoly on violence. Yes. So, um, God. I keep thinking back on this uh, Gavin Newsom open letter to the Muslim community in this this state. Oh boy, state. what, what it's it say? So, it's so good. It's so now again. I have to I have to preface it all the time. There are many dudes who engage in chick think, as I as I call it. Gavin Newsom like was that way. Yeah. Um, Garcetti was our yeah, mayor. He I don't thought understand that way. why women think Gavin Newsom is so hot. Have you seen this? They're well, thirsting for him. He's physically attractive. I don't even agree with that. But well, look, at a, I guess, cer- at a certain point, there's a community standard. I guess so. And if, once you're over six foot and not fat and have all your hair, we'll, we'll <laughs> give it to you. Wait a minute. I just described myself. Nice. Well, look out, world. <laughs> look uh, out, Gavin. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, it's Justin Trudeau is the same thing. He's... He's yeah. a woman. First things first, I, I swear to God, I, I, I know I seem like an asshole with this. Watch how all these guys cross their legs. Watch how Gavin Newsom crosses his legs. He crosses way over the... He crosses at... Watch watch how Justin Trudeau crosses. Watch how Barack Obama crosses. Watch how all the liberal dudes who think like chicks... It's like cross they're a Ken doll. Legs. They literally cross their legs like women... Who are on the Tonight Show in the eighties? Like, like we if you're Peter wearing Sear. a skirt, like when you do panel on uh, the Tonight Show, and you're a woman, you wear a skirt. That's how you cross your legs. Now you see Trump; he spreads his knees out, puts yeah. his hands down by his junk, and just lets it air. Right? So you can I mean, they're, they're virtue <laughs> signaling by how they cross. You need their to legs. maximize the space that you're taking up as a yes. man. Yeah, but it's also, a power stance. I mean, have you seen the way that Trump shakes people's hands? Yes, like yanking so, them. You don't. I mean, you haven't experienced this. I have tried to emulate these guys by crossing my legs like they cross their legs, the blood gets cut off to my nutsack. It's literally you saying, I don't have balls. It's like it's symbolic. Like yeah. when you see Gavin Newsom and you see him cross his legs, it's like, well, I don't know what's happened to your nutsack, dude. Either they're up your ass or you're sitting on them or your <laughs> wife has them at home in a mason jar. I don't know what's going on, but I can't physically do that. My balls are too prodigious. Well, it's because they're, like, spiritually castrated. Oh. Man-spreading needs to make a comeback. It's so weird. That issue, like, came to the forefront in the mid-2010s when people were still saying social justice warrior. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I guess that shifted over to calling people woke mm-hmm. at some point. But I didn't realize it's its spiritual significance until later on. That you're really trying to spiritually castrate men when you don't have the option to just cut their balls off. Keep track of leaders and how they cross their legs. It's important. You're going to see it. It's important. It's like a physical, it's it's a offering to the people that are watching this. When you see someone cross their legs that way, it's like seeing somebody driving alone in the car with a mask on. You go, I know who that person is. I know what their politics are. I know how they think. If I'm walking past someone who, you know, has the N95 on, it's so funny. I saw someone say that that's like the lib women's version of a hijab now, oh, wearing the N95 <laughs> strapped real tight to their face. I just start like loudly coughing in their direction. Shrewd. I just think that they need to be bullied at this point. It, it's really sad what COVID did to some of these people because they were like already right on the precipice of a mental breakdown or psychosis. Mm -hmm. of some kind and that's really what triggered it and they still haven't they're still in their private 
forums talking with each other about how their toxic family members are doing Thanksgiving. Right. Like, it's over for them. They're yeah. never coming back. Well, I have another theory. A lot of theories about women. <laughs> I uh, okay. I agree with you in that this this started years ago, predates you, but we sort of thought that the feminine perspective was the progressive. I don't mean progressive in terms of politics, but just a more spiritual move toward the light. Less physical stuff, less fights, less battles, less wars. You know, like this would be a better, this would be a better America if it was m more feminized. Kumbaya. And we didn't really realize we'd made a horrible and grave miscalculation in, in terms of Who's we, In though? terms of that. Is we men? Men, look, I sat next to Dr. Drew. We did Love Line before you were born, and he would constantly tell me that we should be more like women, like it would be better. Now, it seems a little nutty now, although there's a lot of men turning into women, and, you know, but back then, the thought was men put their hands on each other, men are aggressive, men are sort of cavemen, and we want to evolve from that. We want to evolve oh, well, from that. Well, that's a terrible view of men. That's a, that's a terrible way to view men and what masculinity is. I agree, but it's hard to argue with because historically it was men doing all the raping and the pillaging and the fighting and, and all that stuff. I mean, it stuff. still is. They just dress up as women to get an excuse to do it now. Yeah, but it exists. It, it, it is an evolution. I, you know, my contention is we just need to stop at some point. We, we evolved from men bonking women on top of the head and dragging them into their cave for sex. Uh, we can all agree that's probably not good. But at some point, we get to some homeostasis and we stop. Men and are men, when was women that? are women. I would say February 2004. Specifically February. 28th. Yeah, <laughs> right, right at the, the end there. End. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I disagree. I think we were already well on the track to a total breakdown of the relationship between men and women in 2004, in the 90s, in the 80s. Oh, maybe the, I mean, maybe really, the breakdown, <laughs> I'm talking about as a society. I mean, as a society as well. Like, I think I would trace it back in terms of the dynamic between the sexes back to the birth control pill, but probably even earlier, uh, as I've been reading more and more about the history of it. And if we're talking about society as a whole, I honestly blame it all on the printing press. <laughs> You're not a Gutenberg fan? No. You don't like the Police Academy films? I'm like cursed. Classic Gen Z. Classic I'm cursed classic. with literacy. <laughs> yes. I didn't consent to being literate. Yeah. No. I mean, but seriously, though, um, the Reformation is what resulted from the printing press. Then came the Enlightenment, then the Industrial Revolution. The Industrial Revolution is what bore feminism, and here we are. Yeah, so I was something I think about as well is maybe we knew something because we used to say that's not very ladylike to women mm -hmm. all the time many, many years ago, hundreds I mean, I've of years heard that. ago. Before. Yeah, it exists, but it used to exist a lot. Like a good, yeah. they don't, ha a lady would never, a good lady, you know, they'd always go with lady. So maybe we knew that this was in them to kind of freak out and go nuts. Maybe they we're trying control. to tamp it down. Like we're yeah. going, act. that's not very ladylike to <laughs> get up to a podium and start screaming and going insane. Yeah. Yes, but we decided everyone needed to let their freak flag fly. And so here we are. So then the question is- Why? Well, Why do people deserve that? Listen. People should express themselves less. I agree. Like you're literally imposing yourself and your worst qualities on society when you do that. Well, I think what like this I see is people with their like rainbow bumper stickers and they just need everyone to know that they're gay. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, I shouldn't know that you're gay before I even met you. Oh, uh, this, <laughs> this is my whole point. I don't. It extends beyond just that. Yes. I don't want to know if you're gay. That's, or, up, that's up to you. Like, uh, people have, like, these radical pro-abortion things all over their cars or any way that they can express their individuality. Yes. They need to stop doing that. Don't go to West Hollywood. That, that's going to yeah. be a house of horrors for you. If, uh... Yeah. Well, if I ever have to come back here, 
I guess it's inevitable. <laughs> but well, yeah, do it's not. out of control. Individuality that it is out of control. No, I listen. I agree in terms of advertising to other people who you are uh, via bumper sticker or whatever modality it is. I don't like I don't like tattoos and piercings and stuff like that because I just don't want to know <laughs> what you're into. I don't even like yeah. like sports jerseys and hats and stuff like that. I just <laughs> just I, I don't want to know anything anything about you, and uh, and it's That's all fair. about confe- It's all about the conveyance. Of that now, which I and even the worst is like the, the lawns where they put the sign like in this home we believe in science and we believe that no humans illegal and we Everyone's believe in the health. and that Everyone love is, is love and that black lives uh, matter right yeah. it's the most obnoxious thing <laughs> it's lots to read too and that it's we're good people right. and you're bad but like well we're better I, than you when we're, I think about liberals i don't think i'm better than them i think that they are just lost souls but they legitimately hate me well they're not religious people religion went in the vacuum was created and this filled that void and it's all yeah. it's all sort of a narcissistic endeavor but <laughs> but the question is is where are we going to be in 20 years i mean you're still going to be a young woman where, in 20 years yeah you, i mean that that's a bit of a stretch, 43. You, yeah, you think of it, but uh, 43-year-old women in this town, especially, are pretty well, young. Um, you know, if the world doesn't end by then, everyone thought the world was going to end yesterday. Mm-hmm. So that was a big letdown. Um, but, yeah, I think that maybe the singularity <laughs> will, will arrive by then. What's that mean? Well, AI. It's oh, gonna take AI. over. I, I, it's all, like, things don't, don't change that quickly in a way that you can notice. Um, I'm just hoping by then you know, I'm going to have my family and we're going to be a stable unit and I'm not going to let my kids be raised by the internet and I'm just going to live my stable, quiet life and stay about, faithful to God. What do you think about the country? And the country? Yeah, that's what I'm asking. I mean, I, I, I don't have high hopes. Like... It's not that I think uh, the apocalypse is is underway or anything, but I don't have faith that like this country is special. Other, a- any other society, any other civilization has failed, and we haven't been at it for very long. Yeah, I think uh, I've always just said safe space is an octagons. I think people are going to congregate with like-minded people. Yeah, and so people are just going to move to Florida. Everyone's saying civil war, well, secession. I, here's, my, here's my take, but I'm always right. I call everything in advance. People, it, it, we, we had a little dress rehearsal with COVID. Everyone oh in California who didn't like all the tyrannical lockdowns and all the infringements on their personal rights and stuff like that, many of them just picked up and moved to Texas. So there's going to be a lot of they're ruining. I'm Texas just picking now. up and in, in moving. The people are just going to move from states and cities they disagree with to states and cities they do agree with. So they're just going to move. The problem is though, a lot of the Californians who don't disagree with any of the policies are just not enjoying the results of them, and they're leaving so that they can not have to survive what they voted for. Yes. And they're ruining the places that they're moving to. Well, well, well Atlanta, it's Montana, uh, it's Texas, all of these different places. I was in Austin, uh, I don't know, a year and a half ago, and I just said to the audience, like, there's this thing where you, you come here from somewhere else. It's like what they did, I think it was Portland, right? So, like, keep Portland weird or whatever. <laughs> and I was like, listen, you can come here, you can have your farmer's markets. You can have your uh, dairy-free cheese sold at the farmer's market. You can have your holistic this. But you have to stop at a certain point. When you get to defunding the police and sanctuary cities and not locking up violent criminals and stuff, you must stop. If you keep going, you ruin your environment. You go from funky to unlivable. Funky's fine. Unlivable is unlivable. So whatever you're doing with your movement... Portland needed to stop like 11 years ago. Portland was funky and fine. 
I used to go play shows there all the time. It was fine. Yeah. There wasn't homeless everyone. Mm-hmm. There wasn't criminal <laughs> everywhere. They didn't have Chop Zone and Cop Free. It was, fun. It was, it was weird. just funky. It was like go, going down the Silver Lake or Melrose or something like that. It was like, hey, it's a little, it's a little funky. Fine, but you have to stop. You can't keep going. But it was a slippery slope to begin with, right? I, that's why it's not actually a logical fallacy. It's a real phenomenon. And they keep maybe going. the funky is what got us to the unlivable. And you yes, can't, it did. You can't have funky without unlivable, basically. Well, funky is a gateway drug to unlivable. Yeah. It starts with funky. They, you can have a good funky run. Uh, San Francisco had a funky run. I mean, it won't last long. They they had a fifty year funk. You know, I mean, they got they got funky and you know, hate Ashbury sixties and all that kind of stuff. We're talking about you know Jefferson Airplane and and Janis Joplin and Grateful Dead and stuff. So you go, that's nineteen sixty six, sixty seven, six, six, summer of sixty nine, summer of love. Get there. They had a good run to like. 2014 or something where they kept it funky for a long period of time before they went from funky to junky. Because it always goes from funky, <laughs> funky to, to, junky. to junky. I and like that. <laughs> all these places, Portland, they 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 kept they kept it on the tracks for like 40 or 50 years. I mean, if you if you think about it, mid mid sixties to two thousand and fourteen, you know, you got about a fifty year run of funky, but they kept going, and that's what I want yeah. to say to Austin. You I mean, I stop. I think that a lot of conservatives get confused and they just want to trash the cities and city living, and you know, the urbanites who think themselves so superior to those who live in rural areas, but. Mm-hmm. I think there's just as much decay going on in rural areas. It's just expressed differently. Yeah. And there are perks to living in a place like West Virginia. And but th- there's also a lot of gambling, drug addiction, strip clubs and lots, lots of problems. I did so it. you really can't escape that. Yeah. No, it's a different kind of decay. Yeah. And it's not as... Glamorous. Maybe it's not as in your face because not you're not your cramped face. next to people yeah. as much. Yeah, I think that's it. All right, we'll take a break. Mary's going to hang out. I think we'll get to some news. Should we All do right. some news? Yeah, we'll take a break. We'll do some news. And we'll come back with Mary Morgan right after this. Simply safe. Spring has sprung. Fresh air, fresh starts. Take a fresh look at Simply Safe Home Security. It's the one I use, it's the one we all use. They've been with us for a long time. And when you move, you just take your system with you. Name best home security system of 2024 by U.S. News uh, and World Report. Best customer service, according to Newsweek. Blankets your home with indoor and outdoor cameras, plus sensors for break-ins, fire, flood, and more. 24-7 professional monitoring for less than a buck a day. No contract, 60, 60 60-day risk-free trial. Do not love your system? Then return it for a full refund. So what do you got to lose? Simply safe, two eyes in there. Well, they gave me, many of my listeners, peace of mind. And you should have it too. Get 20% off your system today when you sign up for Fast Protect Monitoring at simplysafe.com slash Adam. Get the 20% off at simplysafe.com slash Adam. That's simplysafe.com. There's no safe like Simply Safe. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts, O'Reilly Auto Parts. They're in the business of keeping your car on the road. They offer friendly, helpful service and the parts, knowledge, and everything else you need to maintain and repair your vehicle. They've got thousands of parts and accessories in stock, either in store or online. You never have to worry if you're in a jam. They got your part. The team at O'Reilly Auto Parts can test your battery for free in or out of your car. It's nice not to have to yank that thing. If it needs to be replaced, they'll help you find the right battery for your vehicle. Need your windshield wipers replaced, brake light fixed, or quick service? They'll help you find the right parts or point you in the nearest local uh, repair shop so uh, you can have the pros do it. Whether you're a car aficionado or an auto novice, you'll find the employees at O'Reilly Auto Parts are knowledgeable, helpful, and 
all friendly. The professional parts people, O'Reilly Auto Parts, are your one-stop shop for all things auto. Do it yourself. And you can find out what you need in store or online. Stop by O'Reilly Auto Parts today, or you can give them a visit. O'ReillyAuto.com slash Adam. That's O'ReillyAuto.com slash Adam. And now Alcoa presents Definitely Not a Jew on the Adam Corolla Show. Dateline, Hopi Sound, Florida. A 37-year-old man was arrested for disorderly conduct after harassing a 74-year-old woman singing what he called a leprechaun song and shouting profanities. At the time, he was carrying a piñata and wearing a crown of thorns. Definitely not a Jew. Mary Morgan is here. Pop Culture Crisis is her YouTube show. She's part of the TimCast Media Group. And uh, we'll get into a little news. Yeah, so just a couple of updates from stories we've covered uh, last week. First off, Lizzo. Mm. Remember, she announced that she was going to quit, or she quit. Mm -hmm. It turns out that uh, she, she posted a new video clarifying that when she meant uh, I quit, she meant I quit giving any negative energy attention. You mm. can say that Lizzo ate her words. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes. Yeah, so she's... she I, She's I, backpedaled in the most pathetic way possible. I, I think it was all a PR stunt. Oh, too. really? I'm very naive. I never know what what's a stunt. What's I mean, not. it wasn't even on April Fool's that she said it. So everyone... I really got my hopes up. I was like, finally... I'm never going to have to deal with headlines about this woman again. It was a PR stunt because the announcement that she quit was on March 29th, and she waited until yeah. April 2nd to say, oh, I was just kidding. I don't get all the proclamations. I, I don't well, – We this sort of reverts back to what we are talking about before. You know, you're a performer – you perform, you play an instrument, you play an instrument, you do shows. I, I don't know why you have to make a proclamation every mm -hmm. every 15 minutes. Yeah. And look, if you're in the public eye and you're making a lot of proclamations, then you're going to get a lot of pushback, which is fine. Everybody gets it. Everyone feels it. Everyone who puts an opinion out, um, you're going to get opinions thrown back at you. Some of them are going to be insulting. Some of them aren't going to feel good. That's the game we're in. Uh, if you don't want it, then you got to get a job at a postal sorting uh, facility in our in our leader where you don't have to push your opinions out constantly. But you can't push your opinions out all the time and then have your feelings hurt when people come back at you with things. But I would say if you are a talented artist and a musician then just go about and do whatever, I don't know, Dave Matthews does. Just that's, go. that's not enough. Go tour. That's and not make enough money. to be successful these days. You need some kind of stupid shtick. Like, she obviously does have some talent, but that's not the focal point. The focal point is she's fat. Yeah. And if you mention it, you can't even, you can't even acknowledge the fact that she's fat. You can't mention it. Well, and, she I mean, okay. brings up body positivity, and then people call her fat, and then she yeah. gets butt hurt, exactly. and now there's a thing. I'm just saying, I think she could have a successful touring career without all the proclamations. That's all. I'll believe it when I see it. But, I mean, you remember there was a time when the, the media didn't hold, like, handhold celebrities, right? Where the media would just trash them constantly for their their personal lives they would stalk celebrities literally harass them insult them for their looks yeah i mean a, a female celebrity could gain five pounds and they're getting called a whale on the cover of a magazine and these days i swear it's like they were bought and they are fully in the pocket of celebrities now where they just heap praise constantly and they just validate and affirm and celebrate no matter what. And I mean, I feel like I wish the media could just be trashy again. 
like yeah. tabloid culture again. Yeah. Because it's yeah. just, look at this beautiful, like well, Lizzo stuns in new selfie on Instagram. Right. I don't know. That's not interesting. And it's also not true. <laughs> I think that may have died with Princess Die. You think? The, the guilt took over? Uh, well. For the media? The, the media was like, we kind of killed this person. You know, now her drunk driver, who was her, who was her bodyguard, who was like three times the legal limit. Yeah. It was probably the reason she's dead. But the guy was driving at a high rate of speed because he's trying to avoid the paparazzi. So that was a gut check for the paparazzi. They they did kind of slow the roll about the time Princess Di died because they, they thought somehow they were involved with it to some degree. Yeah, I think that's bogus. Well, but it's I hard mean, to argue. And I don't know if you can trace it back just her. to that. I... Because right. it continues. First off, I never say just. I just said I, it, it. It that was the beginning. I should say of it. I like, didn't say it Brittany. stopped, but it began. They began to slow down when they killed somebody. It slowed their. Sure. It slowed their roll. But look at Britney. Bit. I mean, they all but killed Britney. They like, did. She's not recognizable anymore. They're, she's somewhere deep in the sunken place. Like yes, the the real Britney that we once knew is not there anymore. She's just simply not there. Yes. And they continued berating her for years and years and years. And then she was in this conservatorship. And I feel like the Free Britney movement also just guilt tripped the public. Yeah. For having a public interest in celebrities, which was foisted upon them by the media in the first place. I never looked at her as a talent in the first place. Really? No. I, I, I never looked at her as having hmm. chops. I never she looked an at her. She's an industry plant? She just seemed like a creation and sort of there was a little, I mean, obviously being, I don't know, 16 and putting the schoolgirls outfit and stuff. Like there's a little pedo version of, of Britney. Yeah. Like, oh, it's not really good to be attracted to this. But I guess she's going to do a video where she's super naughty in her Catholic schoolgirl outfit. Like I could watch that on yeah. MTV. I was in eighth grade. I was, her, it was very appropriate. Her voice okay. always sounded weird and compressed to me. Her songs were stupid. I mean, she's she's kind of for dumb people. It's not really <laughs> for artists. You know, she's not an artist. I she doesn't make music. She, I I I've always had her as a concoction of society and the machine, and I've, I've said it a million times. The pe people who are musicians play. They show up. They they show up on at coffee houses on Sunday nights and do like pop in. So comedians who do stand up pop up, pop in, show up like mm -hmm. all the time. There was a, but the ones that don't, they're not really comedians. So anyway, I I, I don't have Britney as a talent <laughs> and I don't have her as a artist. But oh. go ahead. Oh, uh, well, and also just an update to JK Rowling. Remember she challenged Scotland to arrest her mm -hmm. with that with her uh, trans yeah. Oh, yeah, I love her. Was it because India Willoughby made those uh, allegations of a hate crime? I it, it, well, it was on Scotland's new hate crime and public order act. But, yes, and uh, and she was just challenging that and daring the cops, and um, and provided a bunch of different examples. But uh, hmm. the uh, spokesperson for police Scotland said in a statement, "We have received complaints in relation to J.K.'s social media post." She, uh, again, the very definition of F me money. She's got F me money. She needs to go, everyone can fuck She's off. She's burning that franchise I don't, I don't to the don't care. Ground. I'll never work again. <laughs> uh, that's fine. Yeah. I don't care. I mean, I think it would be kind of iconic if she did get arrested. Like, those mugshots would be not, maybe not as viral as Trump's mugshot. She but would be smiling, though. She yeah. would definitely have a shit-eating grin. Yeah. Yeah. It would be kind She's of iconic. She's trolling her country. Good. But, but yeah, yeah, police said uh, the comments are not assessed to be criminal. No further action will be taken. Speaking I mean, of further action, we didn't. I didn't get to it in my March Madness Madness rant because I think it happened the next day or something. But the the uh, Spanish soccer federation prisoner, uh, sorry, president is going to be a prisoner. They're, they're bringing him up on criminal charges. For assault. This for, serious for the, oh, the kiss. The kiss. I almost forgot about that. Yeah, it's yeah. now criminal. Wow. Is it, they're bringing criminal charges. A sexual assault. Against that guy. Of sexual assault. That's for actually intense. Kissing someone. He kissed this person for less than a second. 
Like people, I would have to look back at the video. I don't remember. People don't know what a second is. Uh, I'll, I'll put it to you this way: in the NFL combines, if if you run, if you're a defensive back and you run a four four forty, you're in. If you run a five four forty, you'll ne- you're out of the league. You didn't right. even play college. You can't you play that here? position. You shouldn't even. You shouldn't even. You shouldn't even be there. Yeah. They're hugging each other. He kisses her. That is less than a second. She's literally smiling afterwards. I mean, you yeah. could make justifications for that. Fine. She she was smiling because she was uncomfortable. Uh, it's less it's than just, a second. Yeah. No. Okay. All right. We're, we're we're bringing up criminal charges. Well, yeah. Against this guy. He's that's he's insane. Spanish, right? Yeah. Okay. That that alone is the reason. Hmm. But I mean, maybe if he were British, that would be weird. But like, he's from Spain. It's, it's cultural. It's, it's cultural. cultural. Yeah. I, I I agree. It's cultural. No, I don't. I, the people who sit by idly and watch this stuff go down, I am telling you, assholes, it's the beginning of the end. If we're bringing criminal charges against this guy, all your sons are in jeopardy. It's it's a, anyone can be brought up on anything. All your sons. And, and no one understands it. Everyone just sort of sits around and goes, well, let him be, let him be. <laughs> They're bringing up this guy on criminal assault charges for kes- kissing someone for less than a second on a podium celebrating. That is insane. But bigger picture, it is a horrible, eerie harbinger of, an, of where we're at. And everyone should be speaking out against it, but you're all cowards and you're <laughs> pussies and you won't say a word against it the same way you wouldn't do it with COVID. And it's on you. I spent the entire COVID calling everyone pussies and sheep. And everyone would say to me, why are you bothering them? Because Barbara Ferrer doesn't give a fuck what I say. I want to shame everyone who's going along with her. It didn't yeah. work. I mean, I think it's it's ironic that everyone's tune like changed on Me Too suddenly. Hmm. Uh, I mean, even conservatives were kind of sounding pro me too for a while, but it, it all changed when they realized it was so like flagrantly excessive and well, it was putting innocent people in danger. But I think really like that should have stayed in Hollywood because Hollywood has a degeneracy hmm. and predator problem. The rest yeah. of society, really not so much. It yes. should have focused on... Hollywood as an industry, but instead it went from celebrities and multimillionaire executives at all of these studios to college students. Yes. And just normal, ordinary people. Well, Hollywood And exports, it never should have happened we, like that. We in Hollywood have all the worst ideas in the world, and then we export them to the nation and the world. Yeah. So but that's also, what happened. Also, I mean, it's a noble cause, but we didn't establish parameters. Ugh. So that's I didn't sound in the alarm. <laughs> Word go. Everything's an individual case. No, not all women need to be believed. Not all anyone needs to be believed. You just look at the case, case by case. But this guy's getting sucked up in the wake of all the people who were actually victims, and this is how it goes. I'm starting to see that even credible allegations are just being dismissed out of hand now because people are so jaded. Of course. Because it's, it's, of Me Too. And it's, it's the Me Too activists we have to blame for that. It's it's what's going to happen. Look, the next time the CDC or the WHO try to tell me about some airborne virus, I'm not going to be apt to listen nearly as closely as I listened the last time because they <laughs> lied the first time. And this is a natural outgrowth of what happens when you do this. Now, you you take people who are actually victims of Me Too or rape or whatever whatever sexual assault, and then you start, you have a John decide. Like, you raise an eyebrow and you go, did she really? You shouldn't be saying that, but we're there because they swept everyone into it, which I've been screaming about for the longest time ever, and everyone tells me to shut up. I think that Me Too treats this issue as something far simpler than it is. Um, Yes. Because the the idea that consent is a great metric for deciding what is ethical or what is moral or what is appropriate or what feels comfortable, it's a terrible metric for that. 
And that was a terrible basis to judge those sexual encounters on in the first place. And I think that Me Too only resulted from basically opening the floodgates for all sexual degeneracy, all like casual hookups, hookup culture, everything is acceptable until we have to reel it back. But when we have to reel it back, we don't have the right vocabulary to even express that a certain sexual act was maybe degrading to oneself or was a bad decision. Maybe you hooked up with someone and you regret hooking up with them, but you don't even have the vocabulary to express that now because we aren't allowed to impose morals on sexual activity now. Yeah. So you have to call it rape. You have to call it sexual assault. And you have to frame it through the lens of Me Too. When in reality, I just think a lot of these women with bogus Me Too allegations, they're not even consciously lying to people. They're lying to themselves because they can't really face the idea that they did something that was degrading yeah, to yeah. themselves. Yeah, I think like the Aziz and Sorry thing. That one combined. Right. Like you're just embarrassed and deeply ashamed of something that you did, but you don't have the language to even express remorse for that. So yeah, you have to blame the other person. But it's not them. It's us. It's society. It's jumping oh, on. Everyone jumping. Everybody should be speaking out and going insane that this person <laughs> could possibly face prison time for pecking someone in a celebration. Everyone oh, yeah? should. <laughs> Nobody does because they're all scared. Well, and what are we going to do? What are we going to do about it? What am I going to do? I'm going to crow about it all the time. And we're going to call Let's everyone start. who doesn't talk about it cowards. It's funny you bring this up now, uh, because I just saw that the Marvel actor, Jonathan Majors, he avoided jail time. I don't know what he did either. Jonathan Majors, I saw a videotape of him running from his girlfriend. He was literally on foot chase. And she's chasing him down. It was crazy. It was like Pirates of the Caribbean, (laughs) where the fat wench is chasing the drunken pirate around. And she was in heels, too. Like, I I was shocked. And and then she then actually caught hand. up to I'm him. I'm like watching it on TMZ <laughs> and it's like, he's lucky she dropped these charges. And it's like, all right, she was clearly drunk and out of her mind. She went on later that night to just party. So she didn't go to the hospital. She she partied. And there's footage of him like trying to get away from her and she's running him down. I don't <laughs> know why we have to ruin his crazy. career. They both seem oh, they crazy. Were, listen, they were drunk. They were partying. They got into it. She yeah. got into it. They got into it. He tried to push her into like a car and she like sort of hit her head. But she yeah. he was like trying to subdue her and go get in the back of the car. I mean, he's not without blame or fault. They went out, they tied one on, and they got rowdy and whatever. Does his career need to be destroyed? Does he need to be dropped from every Marvel movie? I don't know what he did exactly. There's a picture of her looking sad, and she had a cut behind her ear. From the the door of the Probably the, the car, strap of the mask got caught Oh, yeah, the N95 got I yeah. don't... The whole point is... is Yes, he got <laughs> caught up. He got swept up. Now he's got to rebuild his career, except for he did marginally more than the soccer coach or the soccer president of Spain did. He, The soccer coach did zero. Jonathan Majors was a one and a half. I think he'll we're, be okay. We're insane. He'll be okay, I but it's that still not. Disney wants to rehabilitate him because, like, right after the verdict— they had him do an interview with ABC, which is also owned by Disney, at the same time that they dropped him from Fuck Marvel. Disney. So it's Fuck all planned. Them. It's all coordinated. Yeah, Johnny Depp's going to be back. They no, got, he's not. They got rid of... Um, There's no way that's happening. Oh, God. <laughs> There's no way. They don't have enough money in the world. They, got, they railroaded... Uh, what's her name for The Mandalorian? I'll think of her name. And an MMA fighter. Gina Carano. Gina Carano. Gina Carano. Yeah. yeah, all Disney does is they're cowards. The, the, yeah. Disney is the problem. Right. Everyone but me is the problem. These people would stand up. Whoever fired The Bachelor. But this host, Jonathan you know, Majors thing, this has been going on for, it feels like, what, a year and a half now? Just all these different stories about him, articles. Like, they've been trying to ruin his career for a while. Akin to, like, what's happening with Diddy. Like, for months and months and months, we're just seeing all these accusations, all these thi- these things going out against him. Like, it's, it's weird how the machine is trying to ruin people. Yeah. 
I think Diddy is the machine. I was, oh. was going to say, Jonathan Majors did nothing. As best I can tell from everything I've seen, especially from the footage of him running. <laughs> and her Tr- trying to run him down. It away. The assailant is literally running from the victim. Yes. Um, now, Diddy, there may be more meat on that bone. But I agree. He is kind of the machine. He was yeah. part of the machine. Yeah. I, I think that it, it's being hyped up a little bit more than... Well, is, was like Epstein part of the machine? Like, he's definitely, I don't think that he's on that level, but they did call him the Epstein of the rap industry or of the entertainment industry. And right, that, but I'm saying these knows? guys like, are the machine until he, the machine goes and turns on you. You see that footage of him just waving to the camera saying everything's fine? Yeah. Yeah. That's just what I'd do <laughs> if I were <laughs> him. This Everything's is fine. fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I mean, I think maybe he's the fall guy for somebody else. I, it feels like with Diddy and it feels like with Epstein is they all had the goods on everybody. And eventually, if you have the goods on everybody, somebody's coming. But it feels like Diddy should have a fall guy of his own. Yes, I, you're at that step, so you should have I agree. A fall guy. I agree. I'm um, speaking of uh, tying one on and, and mug shots, Morgan Wallen. Hmm. <laughs> He, uh, he was just arrested because he threw a chair off the roof of a six-story bar in Nashville. He was drunk and threw it off. It landed like three feet from police. Very dangerous. Oh. Yes. That yeah. could legitimately kill someone. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But I just sympathize with him Feels at like the same Feels like partying time. to me. <laughs> like three felony charges? Really? Well. And he's facing six years in jail, maybe? Here's the, over the this? different mugshot. Here's but, kind yeah. of the, the thing. Um I'm, everyone thinks I'm nuts, but I'm like, what kind of chair? Because everyone's like, okay. that, well, who cares what kind of chair? It's like, well, listen, there's folding chairs. They're made of aluminum and, and nothing. like, And then there's like cast iron, cast, yeah. like there's, there's stuff with some meat on the bone oh, yeah. that will crush your skull. Straight up out of Rondack. <laughs> right. He is and, beaming. Look at and him. And then there's other <laughs> kinds of chairs. So I really need to know the chair. <laughs> Before I, I cast judgment, but oh, see, this is drunk. Your he look case I, by case basis. He likes getting drunk and getting dumb, oh, and yeah. uh, I got plenty of room and for me in that in my life. I I can't judge. I hung out with those guys. I was those guys. That's that's how we all rolled. But you shouldn't throw chairs off six story buildings. But watch him get forgiven by in the court of public opinion faster for this than for saying the n-word on a ring camera like oh, three yeah. years ago for sure like people yeah. still bring that up yeah but he came back it's easier to get away with doing literal crimes than saying a bad word that's the court of public opinion and that's it's the insane. times that's the times we're living in but i still want to know what kind of chair that's Morgan all. Wallen, if you're listening, get back to us on that, please. <laughs> or whatever the bar was. Maybe there's yeah. pictures of that place. The, the bar is uh, place. Eric Church's bar called Chiefs. Eric Church's. Wasn't there some guy who threw a wheelchair down a flight yes. of stairs at mm-hmm. a bar? Yes. And there was no one like, in the she wheelchair. Was like, she's going to the bathroom. And yeah. Was, there was no one in the wheelchair. The son but of somebody. They asked yeah. it yeah. like someone was in the wheelchair, and they were outraged about it as if someone were in the wheelchair. <laughs> like... Yeah. It is just a wheelchair after all. Yeah, it's he not got, a person. Like, he got kicked off his, his hockey team. Yeah, like this that. guy's life is ruined. Yeah. yeah. Okay, There's, we have we the... We can see the chair flying? Here's the uh, security Barely. footage. I mean, yeah. it's, it's grainy. Yeah. It's grainy. It's kind of hard to tell. <laughs> oh, I mean, it looks, it looks substantial. I think I saw a shadow. Yeah. Well... It's like a ghost chair. Either, uh, either way, he likes <laughs> to get drunk. All right, uh, let's see. Jermaine Fowler, comedian, actor, yeah. is uh, out there waiting to come in, so we'll uh, make some room and talk to him. Mary Morgan, we will uh, find you on Pop Culture Crisis, and uh, that's part of the Tim Cast Media Group there. Where else would you like me to toss anything else out for you? Yeah, uh, my Instagram and Twitter are both Mary Archived, if anyone wants to follow me. You can send me validation or hate, whatever you like. All right. You're open to it. (laughs) Good. 